In those strange times in 2020, it's becoming common to have a presentation from your living room or from your kitchen. And you can see the relationship of the kitchen environment to our workshop topic about containers. However, we're going to apply those on a different environment, and that is high performance computing. I'm Sabah Fiki, the scientist team lead at the Cloud Supercomputing Core Lab. In this lightning talk, I will be sharing with some of my team members high and low lights in using containers in an HPC environment. Let me first describe our HPC platforms at Gauss. Our flagship supercomputer is Shaheen 2, a Cray XC40 with nearly 200,000 CPU cores running a Cray Linux environment based on SLES. Tightly attached to it, we operate a pre post processing system called Nestled running Red Hat OS. Finally, we provide heterogeneous architecture interconnected with InfiniBand in the IBEX cluster which runs CentOS. Next, we'll be highlighting four different use cases of containers in those platforms. The first use case is a common one across several HPC centers, where containers enable the support team to develop the applications even when there is a mismatch on the OS or the GPC version. One example I have is Google Deep variant which is an analysis pipeline that uses a deep neural network for genetic variance pooling. While it's a documentation required to deploy it in Ubuntu Linux as a solution, none of our HLC platforms run on that operating system. We tried different approaches to deploy the software, from source or using code environment, but both approaches fail mainly due to the mismatch for the HLC version. The only solution that worked was using singularity containers which enable us to deploy the application without any system level modification. The major challenges in the computational biology applications are portability, reproducibility, reusability, and scalability. Bioconductors are helping us to address these challenges in a flexible way. For example, the bioinformatics tools are containerized and executed seamlessly in a different platforms like local cluster or in the public cloud platform. Therefore, the bioinformatics results can be reproducible in any targeted system during the project collaboration or during any publications. Nowadays, the bioinformatics workflows are built with various pipeline tools. Using any pipeline execution engine the bioinformatics jobs can be launched to the cluster or it can be extended to the cloud platform or vice versa. Uh, this flexible software environment is useful to process multiple data set at the same time. Therefore, the bioconductors provide a flexible and scalable environment across any available resources either locally or in the cloud platform. In this presentation, I will be addressing two value-added services in bioinformatics. The first case study is GATK Gemline and the Somatic Variant Pipeline. Here, I will be downloading the existing pipeline framework from TerraCloud platform and this pipeline is ported into our cost supercomputing platform. For example, we customize the input parameter that can be readable from our local storage and the reference data can be still directly readable from the cloud platform so that the Chromeville engine can launch the job to the local cluster or it can be extended to the cloud platform based on the various computational resources mapping. This customization in these containers are helping us to provide heterogeneous data processing environment. In the second case study, we are building a base image of laboratory information management system that is called as LIMS, which has two component. One is MySQL database and Apache web services. This base image of LIMS is commonly used for many users. Every user can own this LIMS image and launch the services in any available computing platform. For example, the same image can be launched to a desktop or HPC platform or cloud platform and so on. 
the multiple instances of the jobs can be launched to process many data set across different available resources here we are maintaining a data confidentiality because of every user owns their mysql database i'm going to talk about open form containers on ksl platforms System installed versions of OpenFoam are provided as modules and are optimized for performance. This often requires significant time and effort of support staff. It is therefore preferred to limit the number of OpenFoam versions installed on the system so that they can be maintained. On Shaheen, we maintain three stable versions of OpenFoam at any time. Additionally, not all versions of OpenFoam are backward compatible and some users require older versions for their production work. Also, some users are interested in prototyping on the latest version to see if their use case benefits from the updates of the software. Thus, providing open form containers of versions not available as system modules is a possibility for rapid deployment with minimum support. Recently, both OpenCFD and CFD Direct organizations maintaining OpenFoam source have started releasing OpenFoam as Docker containers hosted in Docker Hub. This is still a work in progress, but when attempting to containerize OpenFoam 2.4.0 on KSL platforms, we found that MPI in the image needs to be ABI compatible to the host MPI in order for it to work nicely on Cray XC platforms. Some of the assumptions OpenFoam does to set the user environment needs to be managed. For example, on Shaheen, home file system is not mounted on compute nodes and OpenFoam user directory defaults to home. Also, sourcing OpenFoam environment before using it during runtime needs to be managed while building the image. This was not so straightforward and required doing manually. Okay, now we're facing two challenges. The first one is which porting strategy to adopt. And because Docker is so mainstream and well-designed, it is an ideal tool to build an image incrementally, test it and use it as our favorite building block. That's why we chose to stick to it the longest possible. But, Docker does not prevent root access. Therefore, we need to add an additional singularity step to be able to run with no root privileges on the final target, our supercomputer. So far our experience is kind of painful though. Pulling from a Docker image does not work at 100%. Building from scratch a singularity container is time consuming as you need to redo the whole build from scratch when you change or add anything. Another way to build is to unfold the file system in a sandbox and work from there. But here, we noted some incompatibilities with Lustre and a lot of stress on the file system. The other challenge is, which technology to choose. There are lots of them available today. Singularity, Shifter but also Charlie Cloud or Docker Rootless, or the one developed by CSCS or NVIDIA. On which one shall we bet on and not waste our time? Which one will stay? If you can share either your porting strategy or your risk mitigation plan, we would be happy to hear from you. In conclusion, containers could literally transform the way we deploy scientific applications. Not only in HPC environments, but pretty much everywhere, such as personal workstations and cloud. While the use of containers in HPC still requires some work and care, performance portability and scaling are some of the advantages that could offset this effort. Furthermore, we could be witnessing a paradigm shift while transforming spaghetti workflows to a more organized, well-distributed services that can be deployed at scale, each in its most adequate computing resources. There are still open questions HPC centers around the world are exploring and hope can be addressed in the panel, such as which containers technology to choose, or how we could share experiences more effectively and join our forces moving forward.